Sweetheart! Thank like you, Jeff. Why don't you take this bottle and hide it someplace? Someplace those two flues of yours can't find it. I heard that. I'll make sure they can't. She's just afraid if I get enough courage in me, I'll go down to that meeting and I'll do something about that mob of morons. I mean, who does Frank Reed think he is trying to undermine the order I've established in? No, I've done more for Skagway than... You know what I do for Skagway? Let me give you a good example. Now, this incident started out the night of January 31st, when a young local by the name Andy McGrath slapped down a bill in payment for a drink. And John Fagan, the bartender and bar owner, said he could drink his chain. Now, this is a common enough practice here in Skagway with the Stampeders, but it's generally not used on townspeople because it's bad for business. Well, McGrath demanded his change back, and Faye would have given it to him. McGrath got angry and threatened to go out into the street and find the marshal. Faye told him that if he did that, he'd shoot the both of them when they came back through that door. Then Faye came around from behind the bar, picked McGrath up by the scruff of the neck, and threw him out of the saloon. Well, McGrath got really angry then, and did just what he said. He went and found Deputy Marshal Rowan. The two men talked about it for a minute, and Rowan decided that McGrath deserved his change. The two men went running back into that saloon, but as they came busting through those swinging doors, that slimy weasel of a bartender shot the both of them. He shot. Well, in no time, a lynch mob had formed and started coming the streets for fate. McGrath was dead and Rowan. Poor Rowan lay up in Doc Moore's office, mortally wounded. Next to his wife, who had just given birth to Skagway's very first child. When that man died, when that new young father died, the thirst for blood in that mob hit a peak. They wanted to hang John Faye right there and then and ask what happened second. Mob rule! Well, there's not going to be any mob rule in Skagway. Now I'll have a rat. I can still see that mob of blood sucking leeches outside of Clancy's saloon, howling for blood. And because I had John Fay in my protective custody, they wanted me almost as bad. They brought two nooses. I had to make move fast to save my own neck. So I grabbed my hat off my head and I shoved it into Fay's face and said, Listen, you fat slob. You better put every penny you have in that hat right now, or you're dead, man. But I'm hat. I walked out to that boardwalk and I faced that mob alone. I've got 50 of men in there ready to pick off the first one of you murderers that makes a move for that door. If you think another killing is gonna solve the problems that that wife and child gonna face in the next few months, you're wrong. Well, you idiots have been out here collecting nooses. The decent folk of Skagway have been inside collecting money for their widow and her baby. You. Hey, you. Oh, you've been the loudest mouth one of the bunch, Rick. <laughs> well, why don't you do something meaningful for that widow and her fatherless child and put some money in the hand? Even a dime will do. <laughs> Poor starving child on the dirtish. Now that's a heavy dime, I like that. <laughs> Your kindness and generosity will be greatly appreciated by that child, I'm sure. I passed my head all around that lynch mob and the thirst for blood went right out of there. They got very generous, as a matter of fact. Just like money bags here. I collected over $400 for Rowan's widow right there and then. John Fay escaped certain death and even I came out ahead. The newspaper said that I was an outspoken enemy of mob rule and a friend of destitute widows. Order. Now that's the kind of thing I do for Skagway. <laughs>